Janvar Internet I have in the boat is the Yanma 45. So the service will be for the 4JH45. If you have anything in the other engine, they might look similar, they might be the same, but you have to double check that it is the same. But again, oil changes are more or less the same, uh, filter changes are the same. Uh, you just need to make sure that you have the right part for the, the oil filters, for example, or the diesel filters. If you use diesel filters, this is also the place where you will see what the diesel filter is. My advice is always use a Yanmar dealer if you're inside a, a Yanmar certified technician, if you're inside your warranty period, so, so not to lose your warranty. There is also a very nice table on page 85 and page 86, which tells you exactly on the first 50 hours what you should do, every 250 hours what you should do, and every 500 hours what you should do, and so on. So if you if you at a place where there is no Yanmar dealer, like a little remote island, or even places where where you're in a marina where there's just no, and you know you need to service your engine, um, rather service your engine if you know you're going to motor maybe another hundred hours because you can lose your warranty there too, or engine can not be happy. As for the services, make sure that you actually read the manual if you need to do it on your own. So make sure you read your manual and, and see that you're actually doing all of the stuff and you're doing it correctly. Um, it's not always a nice thing to read manuals, I know that. I'm an IT guy and I don't believe in reading manuals, but I believe that all my clients should read the manuals. <laughs> so, But this one is, is, is pretty important, so read the manuals. The first thing that you need to know is what kind of oil you're going to use, so um, there's also a sail drive, Yanmar um, is, has his own sail drive. So check the oil specifications that you need. And luckily for this setup that I have, the same oil is used for both the engines. So for the engine and for the sail drive, I can use the same oil, but you have to make sure that maybe your sail drive is using a different oil. This is a sail drive, not a gearbox. A gearbox is using a different oil. Definitely, it's much more thicker, much more, I, I think it's just for lubrication. Um, so make sure by reading the manual what you need to do. And also they will have special tools that you can use, like for instance, the impeller. To extract the impeller, you need a special tool. It's not that special, but it makes life easier. So it's a good idea to read your manual before the time. Start by pressing the emergency stop button so then you know someone could accidentally start the engine. What you will need is a phone to watch this episode so that you can find <laughs> just joking you will need the phone what i do is i take pictures of all the serial numbers so if you watch here there's a serial number there and each one of the yanmar parts have the serial numbers so this you can see all of them they have these serial numbers so for me, it's much easier to take the serial numbers and then when I need to replace them, I can easily just show the pictures and I will hopefully get the same part. Obviously, you can also um, take a picture of this, but it doesn't have always the port numbers. Like this one does have the port number, if you can see there, so it looks like you have the port number. But for instance, this one here has a port number there, but it doesn't have any port numbers on the side. If you have a drain valve, you can use a drain valve and then with a little bucket and just unfasten the stop there and then you can drain it into, into a bucket and you can just inspect it there. 
we're going to um, replace now the primary or the first stage fuel filter as well as the water separator. Um, I also keep this one because if I replace the old one it will be full of fuel so you can dump in there and put it in a box and hopefully the fuel will stay inside the, the plastic and it will not drip and drain everywhere. So let's have this sachet very close by as well as that one. So I'm going to put this very close to where we're going to need it. So I'm going to put it over there. This one, I will need some monkey tricks to get over somewhere here because it's sitting, the fuel separator is over there. So I will need to basically get my two meters over this engine and again make sure the engine is not hot, that you will get burnt, um, or too hot, it needs to be hot for the oil to come out. And it has a seal there, so we will need to, to make sure that the seal is is wet. So we will use the same diesel or fuel to actually make the seal wet. And this side is a, the, the alarm that's actually put in, in here. There's a water trap alarm or some alarm that's in here. And we need to take that off. So that's part of the first things that we will need to do. So let's get started. And this is a messy one. So I'm also putting my little trusty bucket ready because the moment you take this one out, the water drains and it is chaos. So we don't we don't want to get caught off guard. This one is a messy one. The first thing that you need to do is you need to remove the fire suppressor. It's not a fire preventer, they call it a fire suppressor. In my case, this is like a water trap and any water that gets in here actually makes it very rusty inside. So also make sure that the rust is removed. Let's get started. <laughs> this is not an easy one. So here's my trusty bucket and it's going to be a very messy affair. So I've got also this one here. And I put this one very close by. Okay, for this one, we can actually open this drain plug here at the bottom. So if you can see, there's a drain plug here at the bottom. And hopefully we can get most of the fuel drained like this. So the first, you need to drain the fuel through here and you must have your trusty bucket with you and when the fuel comes out you must check whether there is water and if there is no water, no gunk, then you're fine okay, so I'm going to loosen this completely put it at a safe place and then this one will now drain what I'm also going to do to help this drain, I'm going to open the, the vent on top. So now the fuel will drain inside here. Also remember to close your fuel, fuel cock at the fuel tank before you do this, otherwise you might just drain your whole fuel tank. On a Leopard 25, the fuel tank is below this level. So we kind of like good. Okay, check for any any water. I don't see any water. So it looks like we are good. Or any black stuff. So I'm opening this little bleed valve here on top to make sure the air is coming out oh, the, all the fuel coming out so there's a bleeding air but now it's the opposite so it's actually breaking the vacuum 
while that diesel is dripping out there we need to get the connectors of the sensor loosened and make sure that these two wires don't touch and now I can actually then also and 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 do that one use this I think a monkey wrench in English and carefully and do this till it's loose okay I can use now my hand and this is going to be a little bit messy so keep your bucket ready okay and the sensor is out this is the alarm sensor okay that wasn't too difficult now we need to and tighten this okay done I'm going to put it into the little plastic bag and put it into the little box and the whole time I'm trying to work over the bucket so I minimize the, the spillage. Now I need to get the new one. So here's a new one. And to ease up a little bit of my pain, I'm going to fit this one back while it's here. It's actually much easier this way. You can add, you can put a drain pipe here and then drain it into the bucket. But as you just noticed, it is not draining all the fuel. So even if you wait a long time, the fuel doesn't drain. Even if you opened this little bleed valve. I don't know. So it's messy. Now I'm going to put some diesel here. And we've got a bucket full of diesel. Okay, so I applied liberally diesel. Now we need to put it back. First, I let the engine run because if the oil is cold, especially here now in winter time, the oil is cold, it is not easy to suck it out of the engine. So the vacuum needs to suck it out and that is a very difficult process if the oil is warm uh, cold so at this moment the engine is 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 pretty warm i let it run for maybe 20 minutes but i also did the sail drive in gear so um, if you're at anchor then you need to just put it in <laughs> in a stern so that you don't go over your anchor but still stay with the wind but the, the, the idea is that you actually let the oil mix. If there's any water, it will mix with the oil and you can suck the whole lot out. But also the particles, you want the particles also to be sucked out. So little foul metals and things like that, you want to suck that out as well. So it's easier if it's suspended. But more importantly, you want the oil to be warm. So I'm going to start first with the sail drives because the sail drives is in the water and I don't want it to get too cold. So let us see how we do the sail drive. If you can see here, yeah, this is the sail drive of course. It's, it's a SD, SD60. Um, and this SD60 has this little pipe here. So this is where you fill the oil and 
So you need to take this out if you want to fill the oil or check the oil level. This is also oil level um, measurer or dipstick. So you can see the oil level. It also has these this parts here which is like chafed. So it will let the air in if it's just a little bit open. So we're going to keep it a little bit open. This is the one, the pipe that we want to want to use. So this suction pipe goes all the way down. Well, that is what they say. It's going all the way down. And we want to now just take this one and unscrew or untighten this one. So let us untighten this. Okay, it's untighten. And now we just need to get this plug out. So this is how this plug is working. So this is the plug that goes inside there. Now what we need to do is put this suction pipe inside here and measure. So we want to know it is over there. Okay, so and this is now where you're going to need your cloth to wipe off the oil. And the reason why we measure this is we're going to put tape around that. Make sure it is nice and clean. So we know now it is over there. Okay, you'll very soon see why. I'm going to make this part a little bit thicker. Okay, so this part needs to be a little bit thicker so that we can seal it off. So I'm just going to use a little bit of electrical tape. Okay, so it's now a little bit thicker, so let us see if it is thick enough. I think it is nicely done. Okay, that's the first part. And now I'm going to tighten this up again. Okay, now that is nicely sealed. Voila! I make sure that this one is open. You can open it completely, but if you open, then stuff can fall in there. So I just leave it. And then the air will, so that will allow the air to, to be sucked in here as we then suck the oil out here. Let's. <laughs> Let's see if this is working. So we pull back in, and I recommend you do 20. 20 at a time. So the oil is now working quite nicely. It's coming quite nicely through the pipe. And just wait till the vacuum is finished and then we suck again. We pump and suck and pump and suck. You can actually see some of the particles already coming through. So that is metal filings coming through there. So it's nice to have a, a clear pipe so you can actually see the metal filings coming through. Look, here's another one. See the metal filings coming through? For the reverse, now that we basically all the gearbox oil is out, the sail drive oil, <laughs> now that the sail drive oil is out, I'm just going to untighten it again to break the, the vacuum or to the seal because we need to get our little suction device out of here. Okay, that is out, 
get out trusty cleaning cloth ready so for it to be sealed off I just put this little plaque back again so I've got everything ready and you have to be careful because if you this thing is now very full very 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 full so you need to be extremely careful when throwing this or pouring it in and don't overfill it don't go too fast For the engine oil, it's a similar procedure, but instead of taking it out of a, a, a suction, we're actually going to go in through the dipstick. So we open the dipstick, dipstick up. We need to just make sure no oil is dripping. And Ooh. Then you put this one all the way in to the bottom. Okay. Then you know you're almost finished. Okay. But now you can see. Wait. Yeah, the bubbles is there. So I think we we are there. I will keep on doing this, making sure all the oil is drained. For us to change the oil filter, the oil filter normally is just tightened by the hand, so it is actually with a little bit of effort you can unscrew it. But if not, then you can use this kind of tool, just put it over. But let's see, maybe this one is not that tight. And the oil filter is over here. I put a rack at the bottom so that if the oil does come out then we are still good. Oh well, not that much but we, we can we can save it quickly by any dripping oil. So we just turn it loose. It was a little bit tight. Not that tight. Turn it up like this. This one on top. We can just inspect that the seal is okay. Yep, it looks good. I've made a whole series of different checks on about and engine checks and even 100 point check for a month before. A big passage a week before and the day before and immediately and also while you're on passage that is also coming up so if you like the video please give us a thumbs up because that helps us supporting our channel and also please subscribe if you haven't subscribed and if you on any other forum actually saw a question about something that we cover in our videos please mention our videos that will definitely help us it's a small way it's a free way of supporting our channel. Thank you very much. Now I'm going to take the new one out, put the old one in here, because if any oil wants to drip out then it is okay, but it will drip into a little carton box and we will be safe. Hish. Those things we can dispose at the shipyards, they normally have oil disposal section which handles the oil and all of these things.
hopefully responsible responsibly now there's a little seal here so we need to get some oil and then put it on here the oil is mainly just to make it more uh, not to seal properly but actually that the, the rubber is sliding easily over it and we just screw it back on so you don't damage the rubber when you screw it back on okay so hand tightened not too too tight but also not too loose you don't want this thing to get loose while on underway and that's it done the oil filter is now done first we drained all the oil then we changed the filter now it's time to put new brand new oil back into this equation for this we are going to use our trusty funnel again and this one i've got a nice rubberized kind of thing so you can chuck it anywhere and it doesn't break or bend permanently or it's about so you throw things at the first thing is you need to find the real thing to put the oil in it's normally a different color as well the same as with the, the sail drive but also it says on it oil so don't take the radiator cap don't take any other thing like this or that just make sure you put it in the oil section otherwise you might have bigger problems okay so this one i'm just going to make sure it's clean and there's no spiders in it okay let's do this this one is easier than a gearbox oil uh, the sail drive oil And I know I took out around 5 liters, I need to put around back in about 5 liters. We are at the full mark. Is it a pump? No, no. Call. Okay. So it's easy. Okay. Oh, perfect. So this little box here is the one that you then need to remove and check that there's no debris, dust or any stuff in there that can hinder the intake, the air intake into the engine. For some reason the GoPro did not take it off, so sorry for that, but the air filter unit is the air intake, so it goes up along this way, comes along this way 
and it go into the air filter box and this is basically the air filter box here so you need to untighten that and also this one here there's a screw here at the back that you also need to untie and done Is that the, the um, elbow? Yeah. It's checked is inside. Dirty or uh, damaged yeah. is not problem. It's good. Okay. I need spare like that one, huh? For for maybe later if it if it's not good. Yeah, maybe it's, uh, one year, two years later is maybe it's change. Our this is the old elbows and the new ones arrived so while we in quarantine in quarantine we can just as well do some work so this is the new ones and I'm going to put them in now so that is the exhaust pipe and here is the connection that will come from the from the water cooler so this this part here is the water cooler then it goes in there and it goes into the mixing elbow and then it goes into the exhaust Strong and good, 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 and good. Good. Good, good. So much for a specialized, qualified Yanmar technician. But anyway, if you need to change the, the tension of the belt, so first you need to make sure that the inch screw bolt is, is loose then you loosen this one and that is the other one that you need to make sure that the lock the tension lock screw is also loose and then you just adjust this bolt to move the alternator this way or that way and of course you have if you have two alternators you need the other one is over here same process just with the second alternator so we need to check the battery terminals we need to check also we need to check our alternator charger terminals and all is looking a-okay no loose wires okay Yirmi dördü ver. Tamam. Tamam. Bu 
not enough. And don't forget to put the run button back at the run position so that you can actually start the engine. <laughs> Let's see if it starts. Um, always a good test. <laughs> 